I actually wanted to talk about confirmation because of some conversations I've had recently with Protestants. Um, You mentioned the sacraments and kind of what they are. And I think it's important because we have, this is an area we have a very big difference with most Protestants from. Um, There are some Protestants that retain um, sacraments or kind of at least the general ideas of sacraments. Um, So for example, Lutherans teach about the sacraments. Many Anglican churches, I, I don't want to say all, but most of them uh, would still teach them. But a lot of the low church um, and evangelical Protestants have kind of done away with the idea of sacraments. Mm-hmm. Um, you do have like uh, the reformed side. They believe in what they, they call them ordinances. They don't want to use the term sacrament because it makes them sound Catholic. Um, and they they only believe in two ordinances. Um, they believe in uh, baptism and um, communion, right? And that's it. Like these are the only things that were instituted by Christ in their opinion. And they are only signs that, that you know, it's, it's a disagreement about what is actually happening in them. As Catholics, those sacraments are very important. So we need to understand them and we need to use them. And if you're a Protestant interested in becoming Catholic, the, one of the first things that will often come up is, oh, well, you need to go to RCA or OCIA or, or through preparation, depending on what kind of uh, parish you're at, um, because you need to be confirmed. Well, why do I need to be confirmed? I've been baptized. I've got the Holy Spirit already. Well, there's nothing to add here. Um, and that's assuming they've accepted baptismal regeneration. So I thought it would be important to kind of go over what confirmation is, why it matters. Um, and especially on a program dedicated to apologetics, confirmations kind of uh, in a sense, the, the key sacrament for, for your program. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh yeah, good point. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think, you know, maybe I Church Anglicans may confirm. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, but you're right, though. It's uh, usually, especially with low church Protestants, uh, just baptism and communion. Those are the only ones. Um, and uh, yeah, and so we have a distinct advantage. I mean, be able to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to go and defend the faith, strengthened by him. And yet, like I said in the intro, I don't know if you heard it, but in many ways in the Catholic Church, it's kind of the forgotten sacrament. You know, it's, it's sad. It is. And I think um, a lot of this may be cultural. Um it's funny because uh, in certain cultures, um, confirmation is a big deal, right? It's almost like um, in, in modern secular culture, you often hear about bar mitzvahs, but like confirmation was kind of an equivalent. It was sort of a coming of age in America specifically, right? You're 14 in most dioc- dioceses in America. You're 14. You have a, you get confirmed. There's a big party. Everyone gives you en- envelopes full of money. If there's a big celebration. Um but the focus is on the gifts, not on what's actually happening. Well, why is this happening? What's important about it? Um, and that, as you said, it's it's become forgotten because, again, that idea of, well, you've been baptized. That's the important thing. Um, in a sense, that's true. Baptism is necessary for salvation in a way that confirmation is not. Um, everyone needs to get baptized regardless. But all of the sacraments are really important and and good and we should use them. <laughs> so this idea of like, Oh, well, like I've talked to cradle Catholics. So like, Oh, well, I was never confirmed, but it's not a big deal. It, it is a big deal. Actually. It's a very big deal. Um, at cross the Tiber, for example, it's one of our requirements for an apologist is um, you need to have been confirmed. Um, I realize that if you're not confirmed, you can still read, uh, you know, Aquinas and you can study the scriptures and you can learn a lot of things and and defend the faith in a certain way. But confirmation is important. It's it's a gift that is given to us by Christ. Right. We have the the Holy Spirit is perfected in us that we can perfect it in that sense of it's a completion of baptism, not making us literally perfect yet. That, That comes later. And this idea of making us soldiers in the army of God, in a sense of we're, we're able to defend the faith, not just in an active sense of kind of like evangelizing, but even defending ourselves when our faith is challenged, mm-hmm. um, which I think is people, people underestimate how serious that is. But we can look at the numbers of how far off um, attendance at parishes has fallen. That's a, everyone needs this. It, you don't have to be an apologist to need to be confirmed. Every Christian needs to be able to defend their faith. Yeah. Yeah. More now more than ever, I think, you know, because, uh, where uh, America used to be more of a Christian culture, you know, it certainly is post-Christian now. 
And uh, man, do we need that strengthening of the Holy Spirit? And uh, we should that should be at the forefront of our attention. Yeah, but like I said, it's kind of ignored. Um, yeah, and you know, it, I'm forced, I, I, I understand the reasoning, but you know, in the Eastern rites, they uh, infants are they re, they communicate, they receive the Eucharist, they're baptized, and they're charismated. You know, right there on the spot, you have the three. The big three, you know, talk about triumvirates, right? <laughs> you know, there's the big three right there. And, uh, you know, in the, the West, they found it prudent to, to hold off on confirmation till the teen years, which makes a lot of sense because usually that's, it's the teen years that you, you start engaging and defending the faith. But, but, you know, the weird thing, like you mentioned, Ben, is that it kind of becomes a rite of passage. And for mm-hmm. many people, it's, you know, when you get, get confirmed in say seventh or eighth grade, that's the end point of your education, right? It's like, okay, well, you're confirmed. Uh, you can go to a secular school and forget about learning the faith. You're Catholic now, you know, fully. And, and that, that's totally wrong. You know, totally wrong. Agreed. And so where I am in the Diocese of Phoenix, um, the previous bishop uh, changed it to uh, confirmation happening um, at the age of seven. Mm -hmm. Um, So you you turn seven, you do your uh, first confession, confirmation, first Eucharist all at the same time. Um, And which I believe, according to the canon laws, the minimum age in the church in the West, um, uh, barring emergencies. And I thought that was interesting because when we moved, my son, for example, he's getting confirmed this coming Easter because we moved and he was over seven, but under 14. And it's like, oh, well, he's not confirmed. We need to get this done. And um, I had to really impress upon them like, no, this is actually important. Like, can you please make this happen? Because they didn't have anything in place at my local parish to deal with teenagers who weren't confirmed. Um. And it, it, again, there's kind of this idea of like, oh, it's a rite of passage, or maybe it's a reason to get you to go to catechism class or, or whatever equivalent. Mm-hmm. But we forget, especially as Americans and, and especially in our post-Protestant specifically society, where we, we kind of downplay the spiritual significance of things. And I don't mean spiritual in that charismatic, like... Um, in fact, there's even a quote of St. Augustine about confirmation where he talks about kind of like, well, you know, you get confirmed, you don't magically start speaking in tongues all of a sudden. Um, but uh, it, it's but in this idea of like something changes in your soul and in, in internally, ontologically, it's a permanent change to you. We forget this because you can't see it. It's not immediately obvious to our eyes, our ears. Um, so does something really happen? Well, as Catholics, yes, yes, it does. We need to recognize these things. Just like at baptism, something real is happening there. A, a very serious and important change to you. Something is also happening in confirmation. And that's, it's critical. And unfortunately, this has just become forgotten and, or downplayed. And as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've encountered the same, just many cradle Catholics who never were confirmed. Um, many people who are converting, um, it's, they, th- they almost see confirmation as more of like a class they need to go through and not an actual sacrament that is happening to them because they just don't have a background that, t- that teaches them these things. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. And I think today, you know, working with, uh, um, middle school kids, you know, once you get to, even the seventh grade, they're already being uh, challenged in in many different ways by the secular culture being pulled out of the church. And then, I mean, so a lot of them don't even get to confirmation. They're already out of there. You know what I mean? Certainly. And it's a scary thing. Um, it, you brought the secular culture because previously this was more discussed in an idea of apologetics against other religions or other Christians. But now more than ever, we really need to focus our understanding on um, whether it's pulling them away from the faith, from any faith at all, or introducing those ideas that are just completely incompatible with our understanding of the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I know a lot of bishops are rethinking that, you know, rethinking whether we should move confirmation up. And so they can have the grace to do battle, you know, unfortunately, and now even younger, uh, younger age. Um, so, uh, 
so you were as a convert to the Catholic faith, uh, you know, I, I imagine you, you weren't uh, baptized or maybe you had a conditional baptism coming into the church. Uh, I was not baptized. There was actually a VHS tape as evidence that my baptism was performed properly. Oh, okay, good. Um, for, for those in your audience that may not know, VHS tapes were these large <laughs> black things that you put in a player that was connected to your TV. Yep. Um, so there was actually a recording of it. Uh, so I was, my baptism was recognized. And thankfully, I was able to get a hold of the one pastor at that church that believed Catholics were still Christians. Um, he, he was just about to retire. And uh, so he helped me out there. Um, but I did need to be confirmed. And I went through 18 months of RCIA. Um, this was quite a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and then, uh, when you came into the church confirmation, first communion, um, and, uh, and so like you said, it's like you get confirmed. It's not like, wow, you know, I feel different now. I feel like a warrior for Christ. Uh, maybe you did as a convert, but, uh, I think the average person probably doesn't get that, uh, feedback. I'll describe it as relief, and we can pick up from there after the break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good.